accidents happen, when they do, call the law offices of Jacob Emirati at 888-636-7264. And help you get back in control again, too. If your resolution is to get out of debt, call Debt Settlement USA for a free consultation. 1-877-560-8877. Your call is confidential, and there's no obligation. If you have over $12,000 in credit card bills, they can cut the amount you owe and help get you out of debt. Call Debt Settlement USA right now. 1-877-560-8877. That's 1-877-560-8877. Tension. Hydrolyze is currently seeking participants with dark circles and puffy eyes. If you have dark circles or bags around your eyes due to heredity, fatigue, or aging, you are now eligible to try Hydrolyze free. Hydrolyze was introduced to improve delicate skin around the eyes and now has been shown to eliminate dark circles and bags. It effectively diminishes even dark circles caused by heredity. To participate in the Hydrolyze trial and see results risk-free, call 1-800-505-7931. Fragile capillaries around the eye can leak, allowing blood to pool beneath the skin like an ugly bruise. But right now, you can join the thousands of people who have seen their dark circles fade away, watched as bags literally disappeared from view. Participate in the free trial by calling today. If you're serious about getting rid of your dark circles or bags around the eyes, you are eligible to participate and experience a free trial of Hydrolyze. For your free trial, call this number today, 1-800-505-7931, 1-800-505-7931. From Hollywood. Can I have Tom put this on, please? It's the Tom Likas Show. Let's get Tom and put this back on. Let's go again. And now. And now. Here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. And this outrageous controversy about Michael Phelps, the Olympic swimmer, continues. you got to be kidding. Now the, uh, the sheriff of Richland County, which is where this allegedly took place, is talking about trying to uh, trying to bring charges against Michael Phelps if he can prove that uh, that he spoke pot in Richland County. This is so outrageous. I mean, um, I haven't weighed in on this. I I came on after Danny Bonaducci uh, in our Monday show uh, here in L.A. and um, he had just talked about it, so I didn't want to repeat what he did. But now that uh, the story has continued to unravel, let me uh, let me weigh in here. I mean, there's um, there's two issues here. One is that what Michael Phelps did is something that one quarter of all adults have done. You know, a minimum of fifty million Americans have smoked pot, and I think that's just those who admit it. In a certain age group, including the age group that would be Michael Phelps' parents, virtually everybody has smoked pot at least once. Barack Obama has smoked pot. And people love Barack Obama. I, uh, I, I, I think that all these people wagging their finger about Michael Phelps should just give it a rest. You know, what is he, 19? How old's Michael Phelps? He's young, right? Young guy. I mean, come on. You know, if you're 19, you're probably smoking pot. That's one thing. Another issue is the issue of um, what looks good to the companies that hire you to endorse their products. Visa, for example, Said they spoke to Michael Phelps, and he said he's very, very sorry. Uh, you know, he has to say that. <laughs> and he'll never do it again. Uh-huh. And Visa said they're going to stick by him. You know what? Fantastic. Because do you know how many people have Visa cards also smoke pot? <laughs> Let me tell you. It's one of the few things you can't buy with a Visa card. And actually, some places you can't. I mean, come on. 
you know, uh, how does Wheaties feel about it? I, I really don't know. But uh, is this so terrible that Michael Phelps smoked pot? Is this so terrible? What is it with people getting so upset about this? I've smoked pot. I'm not going to out anybody on my staff, but over the years, we've had people in here who've smoked pot. Dean, don't out yourself. I mean, come on. I, I, I'm not lying to you. I've smoked pot. I smoked it more than once. I went beyond the experiment, uh, experimentation phase, and I went right into field study. And uh, have I come up with any conclusions? Uh, not yet, but I'll let you know. <laughs> I'm just being honest with you. And I don't think it's a big deal. I don't think it's a big deal. Michael Phelps smoked pot. Honestly, so what? There's nothing unusual about it. He didn't shoot heroin. He did not snort cocaine. He's not a tweaker that we know of. He smoked pot. Big freaking deal. I might point out, by the way, once again, and I've said this many times, America's best athletes, many of them have used drugs. I will hearken back to the cocaine scandals in basketball and baseball in the 70s and 80s and into the 90s. Think back on some of the really great players who were drug users. Remember Steve Howe, the pitcher for the Dodgers? He bought the farm a couple of years ago <laughs> and uh, was a big drug user, alcoholic, and his ERA was generally under two. Otis Nixon, the base stealer for many years for the Atlanta Braves. Usually a three thirty hitter, always one of the top batters of the National League. Cocaine. Yeah. That's right. Remember Tony Phillips, the leadoff hitter? He played for, among others, the Anaheim Angels. And the Detroit Tigers. Didn't they catch him in an Anaheim motel room with crack when he was playing for the Angels? Great leadoff hitter, though. Wow. It was good. You rarely see any 217 hitters getting busted with cocaine. And now look, a guy with all these Olympic medals, he's a pot smoker. And maybe that says something for drug use, if you think about it. Let's face it. Some of the best performers have been on drugs, whether when they're performing or whether it's in their off time. Maybe it's not as detrimental as people say it is. But I don't think Michael Phelps did anything so terrible. And frankly, you know, for his age, he did something that is very, very, very common. Why do we expect it to be different from the rest of us? It'll make any sense to me. And by the way, I might remind you, in case you start saying something about competition and uh, drug tests and what have you, marijuana is not, is not outlawed by the International Olympic Committee. When they test you for for drugs, pot is not one of the ones they're testing you for. They're testing you for performance-enhancing substances. So he can smoke pot and go out there and swim, and it's fine with the people at the Olympics. Fine with them, fine with me. Do you have a problem with Michael Phelps smoking pot? 1-800-5800-TOM. Like is 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show with... Shorter commercial breaks, fewer commercials, and lots and lots more telephone calls, giving a chance to even you to get through on the telephone if you've been trying. 1-800-5800-TOM, it's our telephone number. It's 1-800-5800-866-ART. On the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hello, Tom, how are you today? Doing great, Art. 
Hey, you know, I, I personally don't have a problem with it. I smoke pot every day for the last 30 years, but what I think a lot of people are upset about are the fact that, is the fact that he claims to be a role model for a lot of, for kids. And that's why people said, unlike, you know, for example, Charles Barkley, who just got that DUI recently, he, he always said just the opposite. I am not a role model. That's and right. I well, that, that's why that people part, are upset. That part is true, but kids are smoking pot, whether Michael Phelps does it or not. I agree. My, my daughter is 11 years old, and she knows I have a, a medical marijuana license and knows that I smoke and, and everything else. So but, are you really concerned if she sees Michael Phelps has smoked pot? Personally, myself, no, but I think that's what the what what the uproar is. Well, that may be with, what people are upset about, but they have to get with it. Okay, I, uh, I agree. Pot I smoking agree is is 100%. rampant. People are doing it, and uh, now we see even Olympic champions are doing it. So uh, I, let's butt out. I'm good with it. I hope Barack Obama will change. Hopefully, his attitude will change a, a lot of people's attitude in the country. I hope so. Take me out, Michael Phelps smile with a big ripper and a big cough. Would you come? <laughs> Here you go, Art. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Michael Phelps is twenty three years old, by the way. Fourteen gold medals and a pot smoker. What's the big deal? RJ on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, how's it going? It's going okay. Awesome, awesome. Actually, like I don't really listen to this show that often. This is pretty much the first day that I'm listening to it, and I have. No idea. Well, that would mean that you not only don't listen to it often, you don't listen to it at all. Not at all. But uh, I'm a pot smoker just like you and billions of people around the world, and I have something to say, I guess. There's nothing wrong with smoking pot. I mean, more than three-fourths of the population of U.S. smokes pot. Are, like, just like you said, the people that admit it. There's nothing wrong with it. I mean, more people die from alcohol and cigarettes daily, so why can't we just legalize marijuana? Well, I, I, I totally agree with that, but I also think it's uh, the, not the end of the world if Michael Phelps smokes pot. So what? Also, also, if you take a look at it, as you said, more than most of our athletes that um, are doing pretty good in the sport that they do, if they smoke pot, why shouldn't it be legalized? The vast majority of people the age of Michael Phelps' parents have smoked pot as well. My parents smoke pot, too, so does my uncles, and, I mean, it runs in a generation, and I very much thank them very, very much for allowing me to smoke pot, I guess. I mean, that's the best thing that's ever happened to me in my life. RJ, thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Nick on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hey, Tom, how you doing? Great. So, uh, I know you must have seen the Super Bowl, right? Of course. Uh, you know who the he is, or was? Do I know who who is? The MVP of the Super Bowl was. San Antonio Holmes. Did you know that he was suspended a game during the season for possession of marijuana? Yes. As a matter of fact, I do. Number 10 on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Absolutely. Yeah, I just think it's becoming a prerequisite to smoke marijuana, and then you have all fame and fortune and goodness, it seems like. <laughs> I mean, 14 gold medals, Super Bowl MVP. I mean, it doesn't sound too bad to me. Uh, that's exactly right. Hey, what is I, the big deal? I don't think it is a big deal. I mean... It's a big, uh, it relaxes me. It's a real stress reliever. I feel like it's a positive thing in this world, personally. I thought he was kind of a dweeb when I saw him on TV being interviewed and stuff. Now that I know he smokes pot, maybe he's just stoned. Yeah, maybe he's just stoned, exactly. And I also got to say, I think it was unfair the way you went after Kurt Warner yesterday. Why? I'm not a, go ahead, I'm sorry, Tom. I said, why? I'm not a big uh, Jesus man myself or anything, but he did say he wasn't thanking Jesus and stuff. And where was Jesus? Right, where think, was Jesus? I think Jesus was with him the entire game, <laughs> even though I'm not a Jesus man. <laughs> That's because, at, you know, his, his statistics, he's got the, he's a, he has the most passing yards at ever in the super, for Super Bowl. So what? He lost. But I think it's more on his defense, you know? He did everything he could. Well, I don't defense. care what the reason is. He lost. Yeah, he did lose. He lost. And he Jesus lost. was nowhere to be found. I agree. Well, thanks for thanks for your time, Tom, and I guess take me out Phelps style. What style? I, Phelps. Oh, Michael Phelps style. Here you go.
Leon on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Leon. I love your show. Long time listener, first time caller. Long time listener, first time caller. Listen, Tom, I, I just wanted to tell you, I mean, you, you, you know, you do a radio show. You do it very well, I might add. And uh, you're a businessman. And if you were, uh, you know, on drugs or you, you, you lost your voice, you were reckless with your voice the night before and you had no voice when you came on to your show. I mean, you have a responsibility. You have, a, you have business contracts. And I think that whether Todd is good or bad, I don't think is the situation. I think he, this is a guy who has contracts with Cheerios or Coca-Cola, whoever it is. And he has a responsibility when he signs that contract to keep up a wholesome family image. But that's his, that, that's between him and his uh, uh, clients. Not, uh, not when you're not. That's when his that issue. That is his issue. It is not. It's not our problem about who he's endorsing and what the uh, companies feel about it. That's his problem. Well, that's his responsibility. We, I mean, but, but no, no, it's between him and the cup. For example, Visa is going to continue to use him. They met with him, and they're going to continue to use him. That's between him and Visa. Do you have a problem with Visa using a pot smoker to tell you to use a Visa card? No, I don't have a, you know, listen, it, it, it's up to the consumer. If they don't want to use Visa because of seeing him, that's up to the consumer. My point is, is you know, he's a role model, and, the, and these companies... But he's a role model for who? Role model. The other pot smokers? No, I mean, come he's, on. He's, he's a, this is a family-oriented, you know, this is a person... Oh, that please, the Olympics... Let, now, you know what? Let's get over this right now. The Olympics is a big business. That's all it is. There's <laughs> all this <laughs> nonsense <laughs> about the role so models and heroes and gold medals. It's all baloney. These are people... These are people who are rolling the dice, putting their lives aside, hoping to get a Wheaties box. That's what it is. The Olympics is no more than that. Well, i got to tell you something. I, I still think that role models are important in society. And even though people are smoking pot and doing... No, I don't agree with that. Role models are important at home. You know what? Absolutely. If you want role models, people who, who have kids should stay home and raise them. Oh, absolutely. There, there's no disagreement But your there. role model should not be somebody, uh, some television image from 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 another state or another country. That come on. Well, why not? I mean, I, I don't agree with you. Your mother and father should be the most important, you know, person in the household and role model. But if you're looking up to an, an athlete. I mean, you know, I'm not saying Nobody should be looking model. up to athletes. These are people who who have jobs just like anybody else has a job. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and absolutely. by the people who work at uh, uh, assembly lines, they use drugs. Uh, people who uh, work at jobs where they were construction jobs, they smoke weed to blow off steam on the weekend. Most of the parents of people Michael Phelps' age are pot smokers or have been. I agree, Tom. I agree. And you know what? I, I, I do, you know, I'm not saying that you shouldn't smoke Let's pot. Let's stop again. pretending I, that, I, that, I, that I, people don't smoke those, pot. Come on. No, I'm not pretending that people don't smoke pot. I'm saying that the, the type, type of public image you should be keeping up is, you know, of not what I don't, I, yeah, his, his, his responsibility is, is to his agent and to his family and friends and to, uh, whoever he has a contract with. Yeah, there's a but why, not, there's he, a has, he has, he has no responsibility to us. None. Yeah, then why did he apologize? Because he thinks that's good business for himself, and if he wants to do that, that's fine. Do you believe he's going to stop smoking pot? I don't. I don't think he stops smoking pot, but I think he has a responsibility. He's going to continue. Show the that he does doing oh, it. so he should just do it. In the, he should hide and smoke yeah, pot. Look, look, you know, there's stuff you should Kids, be doing. Kids, he's like not going to smoke pot anymore. He's only going to smoke pot when nobody's around. Okay, because he's a role model. <laughs> I agree with you, Tom. Can you do me a favor? I feel horrible, but can you take me out, Lacey Peterson style? Yeah, well, that is tasteless. Yes. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, it's Greg on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. Is that a question or a statement? It is a statement. How you doing, Tom? How you doing? I'm doing okay. I just moved here from New York, so I'm a first time. Fourteen calling. seconds. That's all it took. I know it did, but I just let, me, let me let me give you a word of advice. Since you're new to town, you just fell off the turnip truck. Let me explain something to you. Okay, nobody in LA is impressed that you're from New York, so stop telling stop telling it to people. Oh, but you know what? We I'm don't care. It shows that you're from New York. Okay, you sweat olive oil and and you talk like you're from the East Coast. No, you don't have to announce it. No one is impressed. The savages of the West Coast are not waiting for you to come here and uh, to bring us culture from the bleachers of Yankee Stadium. So do not, do not get in our face about being from New York. Nobody cares. <laughs> Anyways, I'm 
calling because I see no problem with Michael Phelps smoking a lick of weed. He can smoke it as much as he wants. Speaking of the bleachers at Yankee Stadium. Yeah, hello. Thank you. Well, it used to be. Not anymore. But have anyway. You, have I, you been out there lately? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, not lately because it ain't there anymore. Well, it was there in September. I was there. Yeah, but now it's just, a, you know, it's being reduced to rubble. Right. Well, anyways, I'm calling. I mean, listen, like, he got seven gold medals. The guy trained his whole life to win that. Probably had no fun the entire time. It's like he gets done. Can't the guy celebrate a little bit? Well, that's exactly what I think he should be doing, for God's sake. one 800 5 800 Well, by the way, for those of you new to the show, every time somebody from the East Coast calls in, we always check how many seconds it takes for them to announce that they're from New York or Boston or Philadelphia, like we hear, uh, you know, like we care or like we're impressed. That's like the people used to have the baby on board signs in their car, like we're supposed to, you know, cut a wide swath. you got to be kidding. 14 seconds. I'm surprised it took that long. 14 seconds to say he was from New York. Jesus. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's the telephone number. It's Amanda on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. First time caller, long time listener. Sure. Um, Here in Redondo Beach, just wanted to announce that since the East Coast had uh, had to throw that in there. You're from where? I'm in Redondo Beach. I just wanted to throw that in there since New York had had nothing better to say. Oh, I'm just (laughs) making... uh, (laughs) I thought you were saying you were from some other beach somewhere. and Maybe you were from, uh, you know... The East Coast. No way. Okay, good. Uh, well, I just wanted to talk about Michael Phelps. Um, you know, everybody's so interested in the fact that he smokes pot. And, you know, m- more power to him. I mean, do whatever you're going to do and, and be successful doing it. But at the end of the day, what's wrong? I mean, why don't we take a look at who took the picture when they have nothing better to do? I understand that he's a successful person and he's somebody that's a face in the media, but... Let's take a look at the paparazzi that are the ones taking the pictures and sneaking around in his personal life. Well, everybody now is a reporter for YouTube, as you know. Um, I was out one night, uh, you know, this goes back a couple of years. I was out one night with a famous athlete. And I was sitting in the backyard of one of his neighbors. And this athlete uh, started uh, smoking pot, pulled out the bong and started lighting up. Now, 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 this is a small gathering of about 10 or 15 people. It's late at night. We're in somebody's backyard. It's mellow. And somebody there whips out the cell phone and starts taking pictures of them. And it's like, hey, dude, what are you doing? You're lucky to be sitting here with this little crowd of, like, celebrities and athletes. And what are you doing taking pictures? You know, people have no scruples. They, <laughs> they have no sense of etiquette at all. Well, and, and here's the other thing. I don't know if you know, but Michigan is another state that just passed the medical marijuana law. And, you know, how do these how do these people know that he doesn't even have a, a license to do so? I mean, if it's illegal in the state that he was doing it in, you know, they need to dig a little bit deeper and, you know, keep an eye out what they're, what they're taking pictures of. Yep. Well, I agree with you, Amanda. Thank you for the call. Tom Likas. Like 1-800-5800-TOM. one 800 800 Five eight hundred eight six six. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom. We're now here six days a week. You moron. That's right. Make us part of your Saturday, two to six p.m. Pacific time. On ninety seven one FM Talk. If you don't live in Southern California on Saturdays. You just go to blowmeuptop.com, click on the Listen Live button. Of course, we're also here on 97.1 FM Talk, Monday through Friday, 3 to 8 p.m. as you head home. The ratings are going through the roof, in case you haven't heard. Seriously speaking, we have the highest ratings we've had since Howard Stern left our abode. We are thrilled about it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM, so Michael Phelps smokes pot, so what? Josephine, and it's on the Tom Likas Show, Hello. Hi, Tom. Long-time listener, second-time caller. Yes. Most of the time, I agree with a lot of the stuff you have to say, but today, 
I heard the comments you made earlier regarding one, the Olympics, uh, that they're just a money making thing. Which they uh, are. I disagree with you. Because so they're not making, no one's making any money. The networks don't make any money. The Olympic Committee doesn't make any money. The yeah. host country doesn't make any money. The sponsors no. don't make any money. Who's. The only people, the only people who are not making money are the athletes who don't win gold medals. I, but what I'm saying is, if there wasn't the Olympics, where are these athletes that most of them, you know, work out the, the most of their lives to be in the Olympics? Where else would you be to compete with people from all over the world if it wasn't for the Olympics? I'm not, I, I, you, fine, they have the Olympics, but let's just call the Olympics what they are, a big business. Okay. And the second thing this I This isn't ancient Greece. This is multi trillion dollar business. This is not uh, something that's being done uh, if out of altruism. I, I don't know. I mean in the second with Michael Phelps that you say he's he's not a role model or with the parents we should I, be the I don't really care if he's a role model. And the fact is that the fact that he smokes pot doesn't make me think any less of his achievements. No, I I don't really care what he does at home. I couldn't care less. As long as he shows up and he has a clean uh, dope test when he uh, gets uh, to the pool, and then he gets in there and he wins. What do I care what he does in his free time? Right, but imagine, just imagine, you're married and you have a uh, six-year-old, seven-year-old, eight-year-old. I, if I had kids, I would feel the same way. I'm not a hypocrite about pot. I have smoked pot. My friends have smoked pot. I know other people who smoke pot. I'm around people who smoke pot. I couldn't care less if somebody smokes pot. It doesn't make me think anything less of them because I've smoked pot, and probably so have you. What would you say? Have you smoked pot? Absolutely, yes. Oh, there we go. Do you have kids? No, 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 no. Do you have kids? Wait. Do you wait. have kids? Yes, I have a six-year-old. Right, so do you lie to your kid and say you never smoke pot? I, you know what? There are some things at certain ages that you do not want to have that conversation. Oh! Well, will you eventually tell your son, or will you lie to him? Well, I mean, no, I don't tell him. I will you lie. lie to him? What? If he asks you, Mommy, did you ever smoke uh, smoke pot? Will you, will you say, oh, no, never? Will you lie? There are some things that you have to lie about at certain so, ages. No, no, but will yeah, you I lie? Know. Just yes, like the answer is yes. You will lie. What? You will lie to your son. I don't. I don't consider. I consider that an age where you don't. So, need at to what age will you tell him the truth? At what? What? At what age will you tell him the truth? I'm probably about twelve, thirteen years old. You know. Great. So, should he think less of you? Should he tell? You think he'll tell you now? He's not going to listen to you anymore. He's not going to do what you tell him. No, he's not going to... You think gonna he's going to see you as any less of a role model? No, man. No. And when he hears that mommy spoke pot, then he, of course, will go out and smoke pot like most kids do. But how do you explain to kids that are six and seven and eight and nine that, oh, this incredible athlete that won all these medals that you look up to and you admire, mommy, how can he smoking pot? I'll tell you what, and if any if anybody's seven-year-old smoked pot as a result of this Michael Phelps story, I want them to call and I will put them to the top of the list here. I'll put them no. right on the air. What I'm trying to say is, how do you how do you say, oh, it's okay, honey? Who cares if he smokes pot? Who cares? You know, he won all these medals. Who cares? Uh, I, again, I, I, you shouldn't care. It doesn't matter. Well, the way you explain it is, what's important is what he does when he's competing. And when he's competing, he has to be clean of uh, any performance enhancers. They test him, and that that is what his job is. When he shows up at the pool, that's his job. By the way, you don't know what anybody does when they're not on the job. You don't know. I agree with you 100%, but you don't need... And if you find out, it doesn't make any difference. I'm telling you right now, uh, kids, listen up. I've smoked pot. There. That wasn't hard. Oh, my God, I'd love it if you had a six-year-old, a seven-year-old kid, and you just came up to him and said, oh, you know what, baby? But, but you you really don't know me, darling, because that's exactly what I would say. Oh, and, 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 and if your child turned around and said, Dad, but uh, drugs are really bad for you. Why? I would say there's a difference between heroin and marijuana. So how would you 
explain to your child then that if, 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 I would not tell my child that smoking pot is wrong. That's what I would not do. I would not tell my child that smoking pot is wrong. So if he wanted to smoke pot at eight years old, what would you tell him? I would tell him that uh, I, I I would not recommend that. But if he did it, I wouldn't punish him for it. You would what? I I would tell him that it was not recommended, that it was illegal, and that there was a risk in having it. But if I found out that he would done had done it, I wouldn't punish him for it. Absolutely not. And 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 if he said no, the, the important thing is to show up at school, get your homework done, get every get, you know, be, be the highest achiever you can possibly be, win gold medals if possible, and then when uh, you are done working, if you want to blow off a little steam, that's okay. You would. No, no, do that to I, uh, you, you, I so would. You just don't know. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Anna on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How you doing? Great. <laughs> I was just calling because for once I'm agreeing with you on this one. And I think Michael Phelps, that was his job. You know, he's dedicated his life to that. And part of all things is probably not the worst. I have a bigger problem with athletes and celebrities who have a sense of entitlement and, you know, are seen as quote-unquote role models, which most of these are adopted by us and the media, and we, you know, love looking at these guys, and they become America's, you know, role models and America's children or whatever that we're watching succeed. But in reality, these are just people doing what they want to do for their own reasons. And when they make a mistake like this, it's like, well, that's their life. That's what they're doing on their own time. He didn't show up to the pool at the Olympics like this. You know, and then you've got celebrities like Paris Hilton, you know, living as, as if they have a sense of entitlement and you have kids following that sense and they've accomplished nothing just like Paris Hilton. You know, it's totally, it's totally not, not such a big deal. I'm not the least bit concerned about it. I mean, the, really, if, if you are logical about this, uh, the only concerns about it are for him and him alone. That's right. I mean, our, how do his advertisers feel about how the people he's endorsing? How do they feel about it? That's between him and them. Exactly. Michael and Phelps anything, owes me nothing. Exactly. And if anything, this would teach him, like, uh, maybe you shouldn't be doing this in public. This is something you want to do on your own. Whatever. You know, I'm not choosing him as the father of my baby. So that has nothing to do with me. It affects me in no way. You wouldn't have him as the father of your baby? Well, no, no, no. <laughs> And, and the reason is, now I have to know. <laughs> well, Tom, you're always talking about, and this is a whole other topic, but you're always talking about, like, you know, your mother chose that man for your husband or for your dad, you know. And I think about that all the time, and I look at people around me who are married to bozos and how, wow, that you really chose that man to be the father of your children. I know, no, not, that this, not that Michael Phelps or anything, but I don't know. My husband is not anything like that. <laughs> Okay, just checking. I'm sorry. That's okay, Anna. Thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Joe is uh, listening to us on his iPhone, which you can do, by the way. You can hear us live on your iPhone uh, well, with one of those apps that go with the iPhone. Uh, Joe is at San Jose on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, Dad. Son, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. Long time, second time. Thank you. You know what, I gotta say, um, I respect Michael Phelps, because, you know what, it's just like you've been saying, you know, he does his job, he doesn't show up to the pool high, you know, Holmes, when he was the MVP for the Super Bowl, he wasn't on the sideline smoking out, no. No. They do their job, and then what they do with their own lives, that's what they do. It's not our business, and it's more power to him. They owe us nothing except to play to the best of their ability, that's it. Exactly, and for that last call, they were saying, oh, you know, what am I supposed to tell my six-year-old? It's like... What kind of a role model are you when you're going to tell your son that this guy, you know, who he looks up to, you know, can't smoke pot? What about you? Shouldn't you be more concerned about yourself? I totally agree with you. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. Thank you for tuning in. Now, you know, people call here all the time, all the time, here and every talk show that gives out a phone number. People call in and make all kinds of claims. And we have no way of verifying the claims. When we give out the number, you'll call in, and within a few minutes, you're on the air. There's really no time to give it to a 
a group of journalists to do the digging and find out who you are and check your background. So I always give people this handy-dandy reminder. Take everything a caller says with a grain of salt. Maybe what he's saying is true. Maybe it isn't. We let you hear the call, and then we let you decide, okay? Now, the following caller is going to make a claim that we cannot uh, prove, we cannot verify. So uh, we're going to listen to his story, and then you're going to decide how you feel about it uh, for yourself. This is Cliff on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? I'm okay. Long time listener. Thank you. But uh, this just happened to be a subject that I... Uh, witnessed firsthand what did, I, uh, what, what did you witness firsthand uh irvine california i was a swimmer myself um and uh buddy of mine had some friends over and he introduced me to this guy mike um mike felt actually and uh um they were all sitting around having a couple beers and things got to getting passed around and i remember him man he was right there so you saw Michael Phelps smoke pot in Orange County? Oh, yeah. So this is not an isolated incident. By the way, anytime someone gets caught smoking pot, we all know that was not the one day they decided to experiment. And right. People should stop using that excuse because we know it's not true. Yeah. I right, And so, all right, so there you go. You uh, you saw this. Now, did you know who this guy was? Absolutely, absolutely not. He wasn't even... I mean, I knew he was a really, really good swimmer, and everybody was talking about how talented he was and stuff, but it was before he was big at all. I mean, he hadn't, you know, it was pre-14 pre, uh, 14 gold medals or whatever. Let me uh, ask you a question. Then, When did you realize that you had seen Michael Phelps smoke pot and that he was the Michael Phelps of the Olympics? Um, probably the first go-around when I saw him at... Uh, the trials in Belmont, Long Beach. Really? Yeah. So when you were watching the Olympics, did you say, "Hey, there's that guy I, I smoke pot with"? Oh yeah, I made the, I made the huge mistake of actually saying that out loud with my parents in the room. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> were you shocked to see him in the Olympics? Yeah, com completely. And what's really funny is uh, I remember a buddy of his that swam with him on a relay afterwards said that. Uh, he said they both got out of the pool and they were uh, leaving. And he said that on the last lap when he was sprinting, it felt like there was a burning ball of THC in his chest. <laughs> <laughs> really? So, guaranteed, yeah, man. I, I, I definitely remember. It's pretty cool. Unbelievable. And do you think? Do you think any less of him because he's a pot smoker? Uh, I have. No, I have no problems with man. I, I uh, definitely didn't pull the camera out, but uh, would have been pretty funny. <laughs> Thank you for the call. Now again, you decide for yourself whether you believe the story you just heard. I've decided for myself how I feel about it. You decide for yourself. Oh, by the way, he sent us his phone number, and we called him. So it's not like he's as completely anonymous. The guy sent us his phone number. We have his email address, we have his name, we have his phone number. So you decide for yourself there. one 800 800 tom that's our telephone number. John on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hey, Tom, how you doing? I'm doing okay. Hey, listen, uh, you know, I'm, I'm the minority here today. Um, I'm one of those people that didn't smoke pot, doesn't smoke pot. I swam for 18 years competitively all the way through college. I have a kid that's 11 years old. In fact, he's in the pool how many, right now. How many, how many gold medals did you win? I didn't win any. Maybe you should have smoked pot. Uh, probably not. It seems like uh, my personal experience is that uh, most pot, sw you know, uh, pot smokers, it seems like they either are unaffected completely by it and it just relaxes them, or they just become total loser stoners, and that's all they want to do all day long. That's been Well, guess what? That's not what happened to Michael Phelps now, is it? Well, he's one, he's the other half that doesn't have a problem. I know plenty. As as, I know plenty of not only functioning people, but so people who I function well. at a very high level who smoke pot. But here's my problem. Here's the problem I have with that. Okay, the problem I have with that is my kid happens to be on the same team that Jason Lezak's on. All right, and this is a small community. Swimming's a small community of people, and let me tell you, all those little ten, eleven, twelve-year-old kids 
look up to the big dog as the example, and this is a real detriment. These are all clean-cut kids. Most of them are straight-A students. They're going to be going on to bigger and better things, and it's a major, major problem as far as I'm concerned. Well, uh, again, I think uh, that you're uh, worrying about it for no reason because, uh, let's face it, uh, I would say at least a quarter of all Americans smoke pot, and the percentage is even higher when you get into certain age groups like your age group, John, uh, and above. Uh, anybody who went to Woodstock or saw the movie Woodstock or heard the album I'm not that old. Woodstock, I know how old you are. Okay. Most well, people in say, your age know, group, I'm the, I'm the person that let's say 40, let's say between that's 40 qualified. and 55, I would say most adults between 40 and 55 smoke pot. Well, that's, Many that's of them still experience. do. You live in that little bubble of people that might do that. I'm well, little, a, bubble. a little bubble of people? Are you kidding me? It's been estimated that 50 million Americans have smoked pot. Well, I guess this is that's the not a little of bubble of people. That's a lot of people. Pot. Oh, no big deal, man. All I know is my personal mm -hmm. experience. I've watched people either they're unaffected by it or they're just complete losers. Well, I again, to say that Michael Phelps is a complete loser Absolutely or, that, not, or, or that I'm a complete loser. I've got 11-year-old kid looking at the big dog, and everybody's going, oh, it's no big deal, man. It's okay. It's all cool. Yeah. And there's all these kids on this big team down here in California, in Southern California and they're all looking at it going, and I, as a parent, I'm just going, oh, that's just freaking well, great. let's face it. Most kids are going to smoke pot anyway. Yeah, it's, it's too Whether bad. Whether you like yeah. it or not. So, hey, yeah. hey, can you blow me up, Tom? Yes, of course. 1-800-5800-TOM. Jeremy on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Dad. How you doing? Doing okay, son. Hey, first of all, if I could obtain your status, I will start smoking pot today there as you go. we speak. <laughs> but, you know, a, a couple things. These people that are going to, you know, wag their fingers at and, and judge uh, Michael Phelps, I, I wonder what they had for, for breakfast. They probably sucked down, you know, a uh, 1,000-calorie uh, uh, drink at Starbucks and, and had a 2,000-calorie uh, burger for lunch. Um, the people that are going to judge him will never – obtain his athletic ability and by the way he obtained it not through smoking pot his freakish ability came through thousands of hours in the gym it had nothing to do with smoking weed i might add that all those stories about him uh, consuming all those carbs now we know why yeah <laughs> and you know if if we if we're uh Gonna give uh, uh, Barry Bonds a, a, a pass for hitting 73 home runs, which we know is not legit. Why would we give a, a, a rat spit about Michael Phelps and him blowing a little weed? I, I don't understand it, uh, nor do I agree with it. I totally agree with you. Now, Ruben, you do not agree. Why not? Because my nephew's a, a stud. He plays every sport. He's 10. He looks up to a lot of these athletes. And he just smoked pot this year. One of the first things that came out of his mouth was a lot of pros do it. He he knew that dad experienced. He knew that uncle did. And the first thing that came out of his mouth that I could still play, a lot of pros do it. And he's 10. Well, where's his dad? Why isn't his dad telling, helping him out? We b believe me. If if Dad can't take him to practice, I'm taking him to practice. So I'm letting you know. I mean, I, I I love the show. I love this topic, but you got to think about the kids. All right, uh, Jeremy Rubin. Thank you for the calls. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. dot com. Tom at blowmeuptom.com. dot com. Don't forget our Saturday show. Every Saturday from 2 until 6 p.m. Pacific. It's the Tom Likas Show.